The Willard Sparks Beef Research Center at Oklahoma State University is the home of the studies done on cattle in feedlot situations. In 1998, a grassroots program moved the facility from Pahuska closer to the Stillwater campus. Dr. Clint Crable oversees the operations and workers. It was about a $2 million project back then, but it, it came from, uh, again, from Dr. Sparks, but then also a lot of cattle producers within the state and a grant by USDA. And the vet school was also involved in that, and so it's really a, a ag experiment station, college of veterinary uh, health sciences initiative that pulled the final funding together to be able to build this facility. The environment at OSU allows researchers to follow cattle from conception to the final product. We have a really good team of scientists here, and it is one of the few institutions remaining in the United States that can go from conception to the final product or to the plate uh, to evaluate consumer acceptability of meat products, etc. There's been a lot of uh, first-time product testing here. For example, a, a lot of the new antimicrobials that come on the market, and, and that is actually dating back to Don, the Don Gill era, even at the Pahuska Station. Just because of our reputation for research, we've been able to, to apply those products in a manner that producers would apply them. Um, and, and so those, those, that data then has been adopted by the industry and, and used by producers all over, not only just in Oklahoma, but all over, all over the nation. The feedlot herdsman, Casey Maxwell, talks about how the university plans to further the knowledge for the producers. I would say our goal is to operate for producers as close to a commercial facility as possible. Um, we're, we're very fortunate that the producers are willing to work with us, and so we take their calves and we feed their calves essentially like they would be fed in a commercial operation. However, every animal is on a research protocol. And so we work closely with the producer. Producers always know what the protocols are, what the treatments are, and what the cattle uh, will be subject to. And so we still have to do it cost efficiently because they own the cattle, and if we're not cost competitive for them, then they can feed their cattle somewhere else. The Sparks facility has recently been upgraded to a state-of-the-art system. It will monitor each individual animal's behavior and intake of water and feed. So we're, we're really excited to have the new Tech facility. That again came from a, partly from an internal grant through uh, the Oklahoma Agriculture Experiment Station uh, and other grants as well, in addition to some dollars that, that we get in royalty funds that come back to the department from a, from a very successful product that's fed in feedlot cattle diets. That facility is one of only four in North America, one of three in the United States, and so it's a very unique facility that's going to allow us to do a lot of behavior testing in animals that are group housed, but we can gather individual intake data on. You know, there's probably a countless number of experiments and things that we can learn in this uh, from all the data that we can collect. And, and so we, we have hopes of being able to look at individual intakes on young calves that's really hard to achieve in a pet set. In this first experiment that we're doing now, we have the same cattle in the outside pens as we do in this barn with the same treatments to try and get it what that may be. Um, I think really after the training period these cattle do really well and I think I think things will be very good but the big thing is in this facility really there is no bunk management. Uh, we manage bunks to a slick bunk approach in the big pens and in this facility we just have to have feed available at all times so that all the calves can get to something to eat. With the help of the new feed bunks, graduate students like Sarah Place will learn more about sustainability and behavior. So it's kind of a long-term goal uh, to, to make the, the industry more sustainable. It's something that the industry has kind of been working at uh, in its entire existence, but maybe not under the guise of sustainability. That's kind of what my role will be at Oklahoma State University is to try to do research that's going to help uh, improve that, that journey towards sustainability. Behavior is one of those ways that we can assess animals, animals' welfare. Um, and so here at 
the Sparks Research Center. We have new camera systems that Dr. Calvo Lorenzo has, has just put in. So this is looking at the animals' feeding behavior and able to record their behavior and look at certain types of behavior, whether it's a positive or negative indicator for the animal's well-being. The studies will be more in-depth thanks to these new upgrades. But we were able to get individual feed intake and water intake. So that's important. Again, relating back to sustainability or just growth performance, because we can know individual animal variation. Um, so that has implications in terms of doing studies on genetics and looking at individual animal variation and how much of that is actually due to genetics versus the environment. Looking at different feeding strategies, we're using different biotechnologies, and how does that impact the efficiency of converting nutrients into beef? And how can we enhance that? The research center can cater to multiple different setups. Uh, the facility is, is set up to do cutting edge, high quality research. And so there's very few facilities left in the United States that, that have the capacity that we have or the infrastructure we have to be able to do receiving and finishing cattle work as, as we have in, at OSU. And then as you indicated before, just the fact that, that we can go from conception clear through the final product is a big advantage to this program. The original facility here, there was uh, 24, 25 head pens that are 40 by 100, and then in the, the big preconditioning pens, and then we have the two 50 head pens here on the end. Uh, and then there are 64 six head pens in both of the barns. So there's 32 on the south side and 32 on the north side. So we have 90 total pens uh, in the original facility, which holds about right at 980 head. Um, and then this facility here that we recently finished this fall uh, is a, th these pens are 40 by 100, would be the same size as our pens outside for roughly 25 animals. Um, so we can hold about 100 head here in this facility. We're a CAFO licensed facility. Um, so we, I, I oversee all the records for our CAFO license and uh, for our USDA permit and we're uh, 980 head CAFO, and so we don't have to have an EPA license being under 999 nine head. Um, when we built this new facility, we uh, we discussed heavily, I guess, as to what our new CAFO license were going to be, and we decided to leave it at 980 head, and uh, we simply make adjustments in our other pens if needed, very rarely, if ever, is that an issue. But we do have a lagoon uh, on the southeast corner of the facility that everything drains to that I have to monitor. I got irrigation records, all the manure that we haul off, rainfall, uh, and then weekly lagoon level monitoring. The daily routines at the feedlot keep full-time and part-time workers busy. We've had a track record of really good staff here at this facility. We employ about somewhere around 12 undergraduate students through the spring and fall and then four to six in the summertime. And then I have have had and still currently have very good herdsmen and a research coordinator. Informing producers of behavioral and sustainability practices will increase due to the, all the efforts of the employees, researchers, and the new technologies at the Sparks Research Center. So in terms of applying this, this is able to, first of all, evaluate things that we haven't been able to do in, in this group situation. So looking at you know, what is going to be the most economical feeding strategy, whether it's using uh, fiber and stillage grains, what's going to be the, the appropriate inclusion rate in the diet, um, looking at different implanting strategies and how that compares to, um, to no implants. You know, there's a lot of of interest now in organic or natural beef production and what's that going to mean for the actual cost per pound of gain. We're going to be able to you know, do that even better in this type of system and that will help producers make decisions in terms of you know should they switch to this type of system or not, what type of premium should they be getting if they do switch to this type of system. So there's kind of practical questions about you know, the individual costs um, associated with different production systems and be able to answer those better in this type of you can locate the feedlot northwest of campus on McElroy Road in Stillwater.